going to New York City right now to hang out with a friend to go on an epic Chinese street food tour. You will not believe how loud my stomach has been growling all morning. Let's go. I don't know if you guys recognize this handsome face behind the uh, bandana. Adam, dude, so we're gonna do a, you asked for this, a street food tour I did. Flushing. I did, well, it's amazing. While we've been setting up the camera and putting my mic on, this guy, rock star status already. I love it. Like whether it was the hot pot place on the Lower East Side, you go to Flushing, as long as you're with Mike Chen, you're good. Doors open. It's pretty impressive. You flatter me too much, but but uh, I'm excited to get your uh, feedback on some of the some of the really comfort, really good comfort Chinese food we're gonna find here in Flushing. Now, did you wear this because we did hot pot last time? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm gonna give you one of these too. Well, I will rock that. I have to say, these are some of my house made pickles. Oh no way! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I made. I've gotten into pickling. I have Whoa. a garden. Yo, I so saw these, your garden on Instagram. Yes, I have a, a new IGTV series called Garden of Eaton, and those are my cucumbers, and uh, there's some radish and some onion, and... This is amazing. My hot wheels coming out. When I do that, I'll give you a jar too, but you're busy. Yo, I don't know how hungry you are. I'm starving. Oh, Let, Let's get some food in our stomachs first. Let's do first. it, brother. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, buddy, we're at our first stop. This is where we get traditional Chinese breakfast. And this is uh, breakfast street food. So I don't know if you ever had traditional Chinese bre breakfast before. No, I mean, I don't think so at least. All right, you ready for some brains? Brains? I'm serious, you ready to eat some brains? Listen, I will, I will try everything. My dad used to say, you try it. You don't have to finish it, but at least try it. Try it with an open mind. Can I ask you an honest question? Yeah, though? yeah, yeah. How would any of us know like what to look for? Like, I mean, this place is really kind of a hole in the wall. Like you would, definitely walk by if you didn't know what was in here and this is also a place like it's not really on places like yelp you would really have amazing. to know a local to be like yeah i need to go inside here and you need to know what to order because when you go inside it's more confusing does the place have a name yeah it's called uh Sheng Xi. so it's like Tianjin. i think it's like i don't know the magnificent Jing or something like that by the way we've been just getting this from behind in these follow shots Walking around with this guy in any given Chinatown, it is like, I told him, it's like walking with Harry Styles in London. This is a girl literally right behind the camera who straight up just dropped her shades like, like oh, a, she's looking at a you. colonial, yeah, whatever. She just was like, oh, oh damn, that's Mikey gosh. Chen. He's hotter than Zetuan, dude. I, I, I'm just saying, man, if this guy drops He's his like mask, pure no one's paying human. attention to me. He's spicy and tingly. <laughs> okay. All right, are you ready to get more confused inside? Let's get more confused inside. Okay. So this is where, you know, you have to kind of know what you're here for. And we're here for this place. And I'm, I'm hoping Ooh. they still have some items left. So we're going to get, we're going to get tofu now. Uh, I have to look at what I, I heard tofu. Is it tofu? Oh, good job, man. I don't even ask if this guy can handle his spice. You've been tormented with spice. Can but you me, still feel things on your tongue? You know what? I can. It was for a while I thought like, you know, I had like developed too sensitivity, like a, an immunity to iocane powder, uh -huh. like in Princess Bride. Yeah. You have always recommended or taken me to places that do it well, where, where fire and flavor are balanced. Yes. Now, I heard, what kind of tofu? Because I know that there's stinky tofu, which I've never tried. Uh, so this is something super unique to uh, to Chinese culture. And they're, it's different from northern to south. And so we got the brains. This is brains. Is it really? Yeah, this is called tofu brains in Chinese. Tofu brains? Yeah, tofu no. And why is it called that? Because it's so soft. And, and this is something we eat for breakfast, um, or people eat as a dessert. So in the north, we eat the savory like we're having now. And in the south, they make it into a dessert. So they'll typically eat that after a meal. And we're also getting uh, guozi, which is the most popular street food in all of China. All right, buddy, here's your tofu brain. 
Thank you very much. Is this just like thickened with stuff like cornstarch? Yes, is that? it's thickened with cornstarch. And this is breakfast food? This is breakfast food. This is usually made with uh, super fresh tofu. Uh huh. Let me know what you think. And I guess this would be silken. I can feel because it's, it's so silken. It's mm. silken. And I liked it. The spice is, it's more like a fragrant spice. It's like mm -hmm. a tingle. But you also feel that nice silky blanket of tofu just melt on your tongue. The texture is insanely good. And you got some woodier in here for a little crunch. The flavor is somewhere between like chestnut and mushroom. Mm -hmm. And it is a bit slimy, like brain should be. <laughs> so they call it that because it looks like brains. It looks like brains. And in the South, they would not put this, they would not make it savory. They would just make it sweet. Now, how would you make this sweet? There would be no cornstarch. It would just be the tofu and you drizzle honey or syrup or sugar water onto it. Here's the pro version of how we do this. Grab your jianbing guozi. This is the most popular street food in all of China. Whoa. All right, so this thing is a big Chinese crepe. And you said there's a crispy thing in the middle. Yeah, so the crispy thing in the middle changes, varies by whoever makes it. So here we have you tiao. Yeah, it does remind me of like the crawler thing from the hot pot. Mm -hmm. What kind of flour like holds it together? So the flour is the most unique part of this. You notice how it's not so chewy and, and, and sticky? All. They either use mumbing flour, a mixture of mumbing flour, or a mixture of millet flour. Like you never had a millet, it's like a little yellow mm -hmm. bitty rice. And the pro move is to take this and dunk and dunk it into your dunk it into your brain. Oh hell yeah. That little bit of heat kind of works. You know, there's so, so much crunch, so much dough. Yeah. And it softens it up. It's like um, like a dumpling. And the flavor mixture is so nice. And this is what I love, especially now is, you know, we're trying to come together as a planet and come together as a society. And I literally slid into his DMs in a respectful way to tell him how much yeah, of a fan uh, of his I am. But I think that this is the thing. Like if it makes one more person come to Flushing and try it, you know, what are you going to do? Watch a Met game? <laughs> <laughs> Best way to enjoy your day. All right, you ready for the next next place? Yes, sir. All I'm right. going to chug this. This is why I love hanging out with this guy. Cheers. Brain. All right, this is the second place I want to show you. Alleyways are the best place to find Chinese food oh, anywhere. Yes. So this is the area where they make shaobing, like stuffed pancakes, mm -hmm. uh, whole chicken, whole duck. Really, really good if you need any bao, all sorts of bao, all sorts of like snack food. The best way is just ask them what's good and they'll, they'll tell you like exactly what's of good. Of course. Pig ears. Okay. Jellyfish. I love jellyfish. So he's saying their, their smoked chicken is really popular. So we're going to try their smoked chicken. Look at that. That's gorgeous looking. <laughs> just sitting there. Let me ask you a question because obviously yeah. in American traditions we talk about smoking with barbecue yeah. and like what woods are used in Chinese traditional It's not smoking. wood. It's not wood. Saigon. Okay, they dry it first, then they roast it in the oven. This, you will have so much flavor in this. Here, he wants us to take a bite of this first. Okay. This inside is made Thai, so it's uh, preserved vegetables and meat. This is what is in there? and pork. Try that. Mmm. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's good. How many get this? Um, the, the sour with the salty pork? Yes, that's high. It's a very popular vegetable we eat with rice and noodles, and the pork goes with it perfectly. I've had like the pickled pork and cabbage like soups. Uh -huh. This is outstanding. This is really fantastic. Wow. Grab wow. a little piece of their smoked chicken. They just call it smoke, it's delicious. Mm. They just call it smoke even though it's not actually smoked. This is fantastic. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna give you the chicken leg. Oh man. Yeah, that is gonna be the best piece. That's what friends are for right there. If your friend gives you a chicken leg, or your significant other gives you the chicken leg, yeah. that means they're special in your heart. Mike and I are now Instagram official. <laughs> The texture oh, wow. is insane. You taste the smoke, right? Yeah, it's almost like pastrami. Mm -hmm. it's pastrami like quality. Yeah. Well. Let's try some of the shell thai, some of the little dishes. We call this shell thai. Shell like thai? It, it, yeah, it goes with the main dish. Is that tripe? It's tripe. I'm grabbing some pig ear. All right, we have some pig ear as well. Crunchy. Pig ear is one of my favorite things. Really? It's so crunchy and the tendon is so nice. Why do you think that offal 
or something Americans haven't embraced yet? It's stigma. It's like people don't think about mm. those parts are being edible. So tripe, I sometimes have a little bit of a, a hard time with texture-wise, but I love the flavors on this one. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I don't even normally mess with tulipa, but I love it. It's spicy and numbing. That's the citron flavor profile. This is pickled chicken finger. Okay. The flavor is really nice. Though, right. which part do you eat? Are you okay? Finger down. You eat the outside mm. of the bone. So you taste the tendon mm. and the cartilage, and it's pickled. Well, the pickling is the best part. This is outstanding. Right. The mala, the numbing. Yeah. And the texture. It's not so soft. Got a nice chew, nice mouth. Oh. To it. We just keep dropping our fingers. Sorry. What is that that she's cutting? Adam's got a good eye. This guy saw something like just out of a corner of it. It's bacon. Oh, I mean. Come on, it's so good. It's like, it's like give us a couple of pieces. Oh, thank you. Here we shit, go. Grab a piece of bacon. Hell yeah. Look at that. It's like a bacon jerky. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. mm. Oh, that's fantastic. Have you had anything close to this in terms of Chinese food? Never. We're going to pack up. I'm going to take you to my favorite, what I think might be the best noodle place in all of New York City. Oh, yes. Okay. She makes one of my favorite noodles in the world. Really? And this is, have you Cheese ever had Chinese cold noodle. I have had like the sesame cold noodle. Yeah, or, uh, it's a Chinese cold noodle. Uh huh. They make the best one outside of China, I think. <clears throat> wow. All right, she's adding vinegar and sesame sauce and flavoring onto the cold noodles. I hope you don't have a gluten allergy because this is part gluten, like that whole no. section right there. So if you have a gluten allergy, you might just explode from eating this. No, I'm down. This is actually cold wheat noodles. And this is a specialty from my hometown of Xi'an. So you mix all this up. And this is one of the hardest things to make. It's so cumbersome because they basically have to uh, like wash the wheat, like laundry, to make these noodles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. For this style of noodle, right? Because yeah. obviously a hand-torn noodle. No, 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 it's not. So when they wash the, the, the wheat, there's gonna be stuff flowing to the surface and they take whatever's on the surface and they steam it. So these are steamed noodles. Well, I'm trying to eat with my mask on. <laughs> oh. Texture of the noodles is insane. Right? Well, the spice creeps on later. And you said this is from Xi'an, so it kind of mm -hmm. makes sense. This is just plain gluten, like seitan? Almost, yeah, it's not processed gluten. like that. It's almost like a soaked bread. It's, yeah, it's like a edible sponge. Mm -hmm. It soaks all that great juice and sauce. The chew is magnificent with this thing. The noodles are insane. It's supposed to be really light, but also really chewy. And the flavors are very typical Xi'an flavors, spicy and sour. Sichuan food is spicy and numb. Xi'an food is spicy and sour. Oh, okay. All right, man, okay. This was delicious. This is great. All right, we're gonna go try some, some more noodles. I may need to get a boba. Let's, I'm gonna oh, let's go get a boba. Way. Okay, this is it. Tiger Sugar was like one of the first Tiger brown sugar, sugar bubble oh. tea place. Yeah. Are right, you ready? We got a show. Oh, sh You messed up, man. What, can I hold like this? I think one? you went to a step four instead of step three or yeah, something. Yeah, I, I, went, I put it on the wrong. You better just, yeah, there you go. Three, four, 15 five, times. six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 13, 14, 15. <laughs> mm. It's like caramel, like that syrupiness mm -hmm. when you catch like a vein. Can you feel your life force floating away when you're drinking this? The quality of the actual boba is among the best I've ever had. You like that? It, I don't like when it has that little hard center. Right. Now it's Henan. Henan is known for their noodles, so it's very rustic cuisine. So and it's also where one? Shaolin Temple is. <laughs> Okay, what is? Shaolin Temple, man. Really? Yeah, Henan Shaolin Temple. Wow, in the Wu-Tang Sua style. Yeah, there you go. And and we're what literally in a basement. It's hand pulled, you know, these are like pretty much the Bian Bian noodles. Oh my God. But everything is made fresh. And so basically you're eating one long noodle. So like, if you look at this place, right? No English in here, there's nothing, there's nothing yeah. in English. So come here and get the stir fry lamb noodles. Oh, wow. Oh, here we go. So Bian Bian noodles are these hand pulled noodles and they named it Bian Bian because when they were like smack it on the counter. That's the sound it makes? That's the sound it makes. Bam, bam. Well, I'm just gonna add a, a, you know, a tad of hot oil on mine. Yeah, well you, should I just? You want, you want a tad? Just, I want the same amount, like yeah, just dress, dress. But this is one of my favorite noodles in all of New York City. All right, try it, man. Mm. 
noodles are amazing. I love the smoky cumin flavor. Or just the texture of the noodle too. Mm -hmm. It's like soft enough without turning to mush. Exactly. Oh, wow. I like coming to this place because it's one of the few places in New York City to stir fry it. So you retain the maximum chewiness, the mouthfeel for these noodles. Oh, we're gonna add the vinegar. Go add a it. little bit. We're gonna add a little bit. Go for it. This is also so unique because it's almost like eating a, a lamb barbecue at the same time you're eating noodles. Because usually when, when Chinese people barbecue meat, it's with cumin mm. and chilies. So you get that nice barbecue lamb flavor in the meats. Yeah, there's a lot of umami too because that lamb fat kind of coats yep. every noodle. And the noodles have that sort of velvety softness. Mm. My goal today is to uh, get you the best noodles and we're going to find you the best dumplings. I'm all for it. And that's where we're going next. Last place, my favorite Shaolin Ball place in the city. This place, Kung Fu Shaolin Ball, we're sitting at a Coco Rooster, so we're gonna eat a pot of a coconut chicken soup. I don't know, I feel like we need some chicken soup to kind of heal ourselves a little bit. And then we also got the soup from the dumplings, which just heals anything. So this is the coconut chicken soup. All right, I know you like salted eggs. Salted mm. egg soup dumplings. No. I have to say that when you uncovered this, I was initially expecting like Tom Kha Gai, like uh -huh. a white creamy broth. Yeah. I have to say I find it so cool that it actually just has shaved pieces of coconut. Does it leach into the soup? Does it does. The flavor? Wow. All right, so we have crab soup dumpling. Some dumps. We have salted egg soup dumpling, and we have very spicy soup dumpling. These are what I consider the best soup dumplings in New York City. Um, this is, wow. I think this is just, yeah, this is the pure crab and, uh, and, and pork. Take your soup dumpling, and I feel like their skin here is predominantly why I love this place. So now I want to learn etiquette from the master so I don't pierce. So you can take a little nibble so on top. You're anti-piercing. No, I'm not. Look, I will happily take this and dump the soup out because I love drinking the soup before I eat the oh, dumplings. Oh, yes. That's the same, same. You like I that? I, it's, the soup's already kind of remarkable. And then I usually try to fill in that little deficit. You gotta add a little vinegar to the soup. Oh. Yeah, baby. Oh my God. What do you think? That's great. Best soup dumpling you've had so far? It's the lightness of it is what mm -hmm. it, it is. It doesn't taste like, sometimes you get them and they taste like mochi. Thin skin is so important in a dumpling. I like them shy, all right? I don't like them thin, I don't like them thick skin. I don't want them to run from me when I compliment them on their skin. <laughs> wow. Mm. It's, it's also the quality of the soup. Yeah. I like popping the whole thing in my mouth. Mm. If you're not hot, if that's mm -hmm. too hot, I'll definitely do it. Mm. What do you think? Oh my God. Oh, I popped it. Oh, is that good? That reminds me of Cacio e Pepe. Mm -hmm. that creaminess that volute oh wow i never thought that thing could make it inside a soup dumpling but incredible right well uh, this one looks like a like a little soup dumpling volcano yes, spewing lava on the does. top this is so spicy wow that is way spicier than i anticipated i'm trying to be cool about it but i'm trying to be like that didn't hurt. I'm like going for a second one, but that's spicy, dude. But it's just cayenne, I think. I don't think there's any like ghost pepper or anything like that in there. I think it's not bad. I mean, it's it's spicy. I don't feel like it's challenge worth. Here, you guys want to try one each? Let's get some chicken soup to, to heal physical and chicken psychological wounds. The whole. Now talk to me about this. Like All right, I so said, I got this at Hei Hei in Hong Kong. It's a very common sauce for barbecue meats and Chinese cooking. So it's a scallion and ginger sauce. Or bone. Mm. Mm. That's when you know you're like next level. I haven't taken that class where you can really navigate around a bone with chopsticks. Really? That's good broth. That soup is really nice. What do we have here? Pork, sesame paste, spicy hot oil wontons. This is one of my favorite things in the bloody world because it's such a delicate little dumpling that I'm like terrorizing with this metal spatula. But, oh my God, oh, this is not going well. 
So I'm just trying to get it all covered in sauce. Try one of those, Adam. All right. These are one of my favorite things here. Bring out the jar of pickles. Oh yeah! I don't know if it would go well with this. But no, it'll go. Out. It'll go. Pickles will go well with anything uh, doughy like the dumplings. You let me know, Papa. Okay. Mm. Dude. Yeah. Seriously. No, I'm serious. You're the first person not related I, to I, me. I could have bought this and I'd be happy. Thanks, you. No, I'm huge. serious. That's very big coming. You could sell bro. this. Very big coming from you, bro. Thank you. You got dill in here. It's one of my favorite dump, favorite dumpling ingredients. Is dill. This is all mine, right? So I can go yeah, all this chopstick. Yeah, this is Hundred percent in here. And it's it's and like, from my garden. That's great, too. I bet you this will go well with my with my. Um, I'm I'm really very very flattered and honored. No, like, it's really good. Everyone you know I'm, who else has tried them is, you know, they they love me and then therefore have to say nice things about it. No. Social so man, I'm not trying to blow smoke up your hickory hole. Hey, well done. That's called the but throwback good. to a bit. Kids. But it's good. Dude, you, you're involved in so many projects now. Talk about oh, them. Thanks, and also, man. I want to talk about your YouTube channel. Let's revisit what we talked about in the beginning of, uh, of today. What made you think, like, I want to just talk biscuits? <laughs> like, um, I, you know, it, it was sort of completely and totally random. I put a tweet out. And I was in my local grocery store, has a little British section, and I wrote European fam, which biscuits should I buy? And got 12,000 replies. Cool. And they were. And you it, guys they, passionate about your biscuits? And so Europe. for me, it was sort of like, they were like, you should get a few and tell us what you think. And people were like behind that. And then I had this idea of like dunking them. I clearly have known the love of a cookie or two in my lifetime. It wasn't like this passionate thing that I love cookies and I always wanted to do this in depth dive but when i found how passionate people were i don't know we live right now in a pretty tumultuous time that's just sort of talking about i like this cookie better in tea i like this cookie better in milk that the thing is i've gotten such responses from actors from athletes from chefs who are like no 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 no, no. if you really want to eat it this way that I think it's just cool because it becomes a point of departure to talk about other stuff. But I am developing like other stuff for the YouTube channel. It's why it's called Quest for the Best because I, w I think that that's kind of what, the way I live my life is like the way you said, those lamb noodles, these soup dumplings are the best in New York. But you're never going to stop looking because you have the same passion I do. And that quest is sort of what propels foodies, explorers, travelers, artists, to keep going because if you if you get comfortable you get complacent and then you, you lose the next they, great thing so i did that but i've all, um begun to record some other stuff and then wanted to explore instagram television so i did this show for copa 90 that will hopefully be coming back when you're allowed back in soccer stadiums called match day menus about mm -hmm. food and soccer all mm -hmm. over the world i did a thing with general mills showing tailgates and i was like you know igtv is kind of awesome because you can intrigue people with a bit of content so i moved to igtv and i have this series about my garden uh, called adam's garden of eaton you'll see me pick it harvest it super quick a couple tips for anyone to grow in an urban garden or even in, in your home mm -hmm. and i make stop motion videos so i just teach you the whole recipe with little video tricks and that's it I, i've seen that it's pretty amazing Thanks, you, you are literally just like i've never seen you more busy <laughs> you got so much stuff going on and they're really good stuff so definitely check out all that stuff like i got all the links for uh, your youtube channel your instagram all that stuff what else are you working on the history channel that's I have about oh to say, i saw that i was like my man's on the History Channel. I was very blessed, you know, and it's a channel that you know you grew up watching. It was a yeah, thank oh, you. Oh, there's more? Chocolate soup dumplings, my man. What? <laughs> That's right, chocolate It's a good thing I wore my hat dumplings. so it didn't get messy when you blew my mind. Um, What's in it? I mean, chocolate, obviously. Nutella, banana, soup dumpling. Did you ever think those words would ever go together? No, but I'm glad they did. I, I know you're suffering pain no, right now. No, I'm not. That is so decadent. Well, I, I just want to say, dude, I, I enjoy all the success that you've been having. Like, I, I've Thank been opening Instagram and I've been seeing you all everywhere and on History Channel and everything. Like, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. You buddy. are like, there's not a lot of people in the entertainment industry, TV, otherwise, whatever, YouTube, that are as nice or as genuine and sincere Thank as you, they man. are in person. You are definitely one of them. I really. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate our friendship. I enjoy same, same. meeting with you all the time. Guys, 
you know, Adam's got so many great things going on. Thank Check you. out him eating biscuits and making people in the UK mad, or are they mad? I don't know, happy, one of those two. <laughs> um, all that link, all that information is down below. Man, wish you continued success, my friend. Thank you, my friend, and thank you for saying kind things about my pickles. Sell these pickles. I will sell those pickles. I'll put some of my hot oil in there. Hope you like hot oil, hot Adam pickles. There we go. Brooklyn Brinery. There you go. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching. See you later. Thank you.